This video was brought to you by Bluestacks, which is a free Android emulator that you can use to play any Android Google Play game that is usually on your phone, instead on your computer. This will allow you to go and get better graphics and overall a much smoother time playing the games that you like on your computer instead of your mobile device. You can play Acid Lane on it, and this is what I use to go and record my videos. So if you want to give it a try, it is a free, complete download. And if you are downloading it, you are supporting me too. So take a look. It's in the description. Bye. Hi, I'm Ander, or at Be Open Up on the Lexington server, and today we're going to be talking about Nagato. She is the one ship you should definitely be picking up in this current event, Inkstained Steel Sakura, since she's fantastic. With that being said, let's get into the gear guide for Nagato. Moving into some Nagato gear basics, she is the well-known, super amazing core component of any IJN fleet, and that is namely because of her insanely good skills that provide fantastic buffs to any IJN ship in their fleet, as well as arguably one of the best barrages in the entire game. Now her first skill, the fourth combined fleet flagship, is when she is sorted as flagship, which is the middle position, she gives 10% firepower boost, and 20% reload and accuracy boost to any Sakura Empire ships in the same fleet as her. Additionally, she also increases the damage of the Sakura Empire carriers in her fleet by 20%, which makes everybody that is IJN along with her in the fleet very nice and buffed. Now her second skill, Big 7 Sakura, is her incredible barrage that has 40% chance of proccing. It fires a special barrage and this special barrage covers the entire enemy screen, it's insanely hard, and it will melt your enemies off the face of the earth. She is insanely good, tier 0 without question. If you don't have her already, make sure that you are trying to pull her in this Inkstained Steel Sakura rerun, or else you will have to wait a very long time until she appears again and you will regret it. Getting into Nagato's general gear loadout, we start off with the main gun. Now since Nagato's barrage right here is super good, it is her main source of damage, so you would want to try and proc that as fast as possible with a faster firing main gun. The best in this scenario would be the prototype 406mm, which is a complete upgrade over the purple twin 410mm. Now if you don't have this prototype, the regular purple 410mm is the second best option, with weaker stats compared to the prototype twin 406mm, but not by much. If you do want to go and maximize Nagato's proc chance, you can use the twin 381mm, but do keep in mind you are going to be losing out on a significant amount of damage, so it, in my personal opinion, just getting those 2 seconds extra off would not be worth it. So you would rather stick with a 410mm, or as previously said, the prototype twin 406mm instead. For Nagato's secondary or auxiliary gun, she can equip light cruiser guns in her aux gun slot, so any gold one will be the best for her. The best in slot is going to be the AP prototype triple 152mm, also known as the Neptune gun, as it has AP ammo, a very fast fire rate, and it is just really good. Now this gun does, and keep in mind, come in very limited quantities, so if you are running very low on them, which you probably will be, it is better off used as a light cruiser main gun instead. Now second would be a tie between the two HE light cruiser guns, which would be the triple 155mm, and of course the prototype triple 152mm, also known as the Seattle gun. Now they are both very solid options that give you great damage and a bit of a slower fire rate than the AP gun, but they are both very good nonetheless. The triple 152 prototype gives you 30 firepower and some extra AA, while the triple 155 gives you a very nice 45 extra firepower. Now if you have none of these golds, the purple budget alternatives is going to be the twin 150mm, and of course if you don't have any of those, the twin 152mm is also a very solid option. Now for Nagato's anti-air gun slot, she has some pretty unremarkable anti-air at a measly 193 at 120, 
with Oath. So she really doesn't have that much going for her in AA. So instead, you should focus on giving her some anti-air guns that boost her accuracy instead. Some really good guns for battleships that boost accuracy are going to be the twin 40mm Bofors Stag, which is going to give you a nice 10 extra accuracy. And I don't know if you could hear that, but there's like some guy riding his motorcycle outside, so just, um, sorry about that. Anyway, the Hazemeyer is the next best option. It only gives 5 extra accuracy, but it is also a very nice option as well. If you have none of those, the Gold Roomba is always a great option, and really any other Gold AA gun will be fine. If you have none of those guns, the cool purple alternatives are going to be the 127mm and of course the purple Roomba, right here. Finally, onto Nagato's Ox Gears. The best would just be the classic white and black shell, which can be individually bought in the core data shop for 800 core each. They provide a great damage boost that will greatly increase the damage output of these battleships, with the white shell giving a very nice 55 firepower and 15 accuracy, as well as giving that very cool main gun crit damage increase by 25%. The black one gives a very nice 70 firepower, and it increases the main gun crit rate by 8%. Together they will really boost up your battleship's firepower and make them deal one heck of a lot more damage. Now if you have it, the high standard fire control radar from Fallen Wings is very very good. You can use it in place of a black shell for that nice decreased loading time as well as extra accuracy. Now this is really really good if you have it and it will definitely make you have that extra couple seconds off of that Nagato proc. Now if you have none of those, some other good options are going to be the SG radar for some more accuracy as well as a little bit more of evasion, the purple fire control radar which is somewhere down here, right here, the fire control radar, and of course the poor man's white shell. If you don't have the Cordata version yet, this is a very nice thing to have once you do get this and then if you do get the gold one, just replace it. Now with that being said, let's move on to the battle showcase for Nagato. Now for the battle showcase, we're just going to go and do a couple of exercises, because why not? And do keep in mind that I just really haven't been doing any of my exercises, so don't mind the rank. I'm just kind of doing whatever. So first up, we're going to destroy Izuna from Siege with my IJN fleet with Nagato as flagship. Let's go! Ooh. And anyway, let's go and talk about IJ on fleets for a second. So Nagato is going to be the front and center flagship for him. And anyway, the other people that you see are going to be here you retrofit on the top and then Amagi on the bottom. Amagi is really good in this because she gets that 45% decrease load time for her first salvo as there are four or more IJ on ships in this. Yukikaze is tanking for the vanguards, and she will also heal up my backliner once one of them drop below a certain amount of health. Now Noshiro is there to buff the other vanguards, and she is also pretty tanky herself. And the last slot for my vanguards is going to be Kitakaze in this, just because I um, feel like it and I need to level her up. And of course Hiryu is just overpowered, so you know, you just gotta put her in there for PvP. So that was a sweep, as you can see. And I kind of forgot to talk about Nagato's Barrage, but anyway, she's MVP, and that is the first exercise. Now next up, we've got a more dangerous opponent. Here is Whitaker, and he's got some weird Azuma over here, haha. <laughs> so let's hope that we don't lose, because um, that would kind of be bad. Woo! He's also running an IJN fleet with... Amagi in the center, because he probably doesn't have Nagato yet, haha, uh -huh, but he probably does now. And yeah, since Nagato is here, expect a lot more Nagatos in PvP. So yeah, just brace yourself. Anyway, they're just gonna go back and forth as always, Nagato's gonna proc, and then Broom Barrage, it completely decimates the backline, everybody's dying, my frames are going to 0%, and that's just because Nagato shoots so many things on the screen. With that, the battle is just completely over already, 
And that is exercise number two, and guess who's going to be MVP? Wow, it's Amagi actually. So, nice. Our third opponent is going to be Alarkak with a very standard IGN fleet, other than the Mogami right here. Usually you would put like Noshiro instead. But other than this, you've got your standard Nagato plus Akaga, Yukikaze is there, and Belfast is also going to be pretty standard. Some people will swap Belfast out with someone like Juno, and just saying, if you use Juno in PvP, you are a monster, because you are literally just killing an innocent ship over and over again, and I will never forgive you. So anyway, moving into the battle, we're going to witness basically the same thing happen. Uh, shooting things, Amagi is going to proc, and uh, yeah, that that's really it. You. Oh, they've also got the high domos. And Nagato did not proc that time with her barrage. And I'm not really too worried. My Hiryu will literally just carry us to victory even if someone... Okay, never mind. My Amagi just completely destroyed their Akaga. I mean Akagi. Uh, not concerned at all. Yeah, final counter just activated for Hiryu. Goodbye, Nagato. And all that's left is just going to be their Belfast and Kaga and not anymore. And there goes Alarkak. So yeah, very cool. And our MVP this time will be Hiryu Retrofit with 23,000 damage. Next up on the chopping block is going to be Spirit of Power with some very interesting thing that I've never seen before. He's actually running Hood, even though barely anyone uses Hood anymore. I need it like nowadays, but whatever. Uh, click the start button, and let's go! I really like this loading screen, it's very peaceful. So, let's hop right into it. He's got a very, uh, okay vanguard and a very okay backline. I'm not really too worried. Their enterprise could just proc Lucky E every time, but even then my Amagi is probably going to go and kill their enterprise since she's going to keep on sniping them. Here's another Nagato barrage. Ooh, very, ch very chunky, very chunky damage. Now, um... My Amagi is hanging in there, just eating up all of those War Spite snipes. And it's looking pretty good so far. Enterprise is at 1 health, Hood just died, Enterprise died, and all that's left is their War Spite retro. And let's see if my Amagi dies. Nope, my Amagi lives, and their War Spite dies. And that is a complete sweep, with no one dying on my team. And the MVP is actually going to be Kitakaze for now. That is surprising, actually. And our final opponent for the exercises is going to be Evils, and this is what I'd call a pretty standard IJN loadout. We've got your Nagato, Amagi, Hiryu, so this is a complete um, copycat of what I'm using. And Aurora's there to go and destroy all those cruisers and destroyers. And of course you got your standard Jinsu and Yukikaze. This will be a worthy opponent. And sure, why not, um, just for this, let's go and put in my Jinsu too. So that it's kind of like almost a mirror, almost a perfect mirror, except for of course the Noshiro and whatever they're using. So let's see how this turns out. The first Hear You vs. Hear You retro in this exercise montage fleet thing, and let's see who's going to come out on top. Uh, I've got faith in myself. Yeah, especially if that Hiryu just took in like half the damage from my Amagi, and then my Hiryu just took like only a quarter damage. We're looking pretty hot. So, Hiryu procs. Everybody's dying on their side, and I proc their final counter first, which is very good. My Hiryu is nowhere near proccing yet. And my Nostro is going to happily chug along to the back lines, shoot a couple of things at Hiryu retro. Nagato just shot a whole barrage at them. And both vanguards have been destroyed, so here's just a sweep time, Oop. and a final one will do, and there you go, my Hiryu lives, haha. <laughs> so yeah, that's basically PvP. Whoever procs their final counter last on their Hiryu retro wins, and yeah, don't forget the 20% extra damage boost from Nagato that Hiryu gets, because she is an IJN carrier. With that battle showcase basically finished, even though I was only showcasing Hiryu Retro and her effects on PvP, that will conclude my gear guide for Nagato. 
Now, as always, if you found this information helpful, consider dropping a like and subscribing. It really helps me out. Don't forget to press that notification bell for my future uploads as well. Feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions that need to be answered, and I'll try my best to reply. If you're interested, you could always join my Discord server if you need any advice, or just want a good place to relax. That'll be all for this video, and I hope you'll find your rest of your day completely great, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.